Hi, Flacco. Welcome to the program. Oh, well, thank you, Bill. Thanks you. And I'm um, glad to uh, hear from you, man. And uh, big hello to everybody out there. Man, it's been a long time since we've seen each other. Oh, man, it's been quite a while. Yeah, but uh, we're doing okay so far. <laughs> okay, bueno. Okay, bueno. I mean, uh, you look good. Uh, hopefully, you know, you and your family have been doing well. I know it, it was a hard year last year, pero parece que, you know, things are changing. Yeah, so. I, I think it's it's lacking up a little. So, uh, man, I'm just desperate to go out there and make some music, man. <laughs> Start jamming, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I miss that, man. Yeah. yeah but, uh, I'm, we're patient, you know, and see if... Uh, it gets better later on. That's that's great. Well, it's great to see you, man. I I know we talk on the phone a lot, but oh, you know, and and we haven't been able. To, I haven't been able to come and visit you, but uh, I'm sure we will shortly and come out to your place and oh, say yeah. hello. Oh hi! Yes, I would see you any place, any time, man. <laughs> I'm sure you ask, yes. First of all, I just want to congratulate you on your recent recognition from the Library of Congress. Um, the National Recording uh, Registry for the work you did in Partners. <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a surprise for me, you know, and um, I'm really pleased and happy, and uh, I really appreciate uh, those guys from Congress and uh, and uh, the whole whole uh, system, you know, as far as music is concerned. And uh, so I really appreciate what uh, people done for me. And uh, my uh, fans and uh, everybody, you know, that uh, have seen me on stage or, or video or whatnot. Well, that, and that was uh, for the work you did in Partners. Uh, you, you recorded that, what, in 1992? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it was quite an experience. Man. <laughs> well, yeah, because you, you had yeah. to, the privilege to work with, uh, what, Linda Ronstadt, Dwight Yoakam, Emmylou Harris, and, and other uh, incredible artists. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So they, uh, we managed to get the guys together and uh, we did a good uh, good record there with the help of uh, Dwight and Buck Owens and uh, Los Lobos and Emilio. And uh, there's so many involved in there, you know, Bill Harrison, which was a producer, and uh, the rest of the crew, you know, everybody that, that participated on this record that I was surprised of. Uh, Quite a few years since I did it, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm really pleased with it. Well, uh, again, that's just another recognition of the so many recognitions that you have received throughout the years, including all the Grammys. So you've done a lot for the music industry. You've done a lot it's, for Conjunto Tex-Mex. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. It's been, a, it's been a long journey, but I've enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> ups and downs, like whatever, like a musician, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, Things uh, going on. Uh, it's, as far as right now, it's kind of a you know the epidemic or whatnot, you know. But uh, I think it's getting better, and, and uh, hopefully, uh, I get to hit the stage again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope to see you on stage soon, Flaco. So, Flaco, is first. Uh, let's talk about tu familia, Don Patricio, tu abuelo, y Don Santiago Jimenez Senior, tu papá. Oh yes, uh -huh. okay. Well, as the, uh, comenzando with, with my grandpa, he was uh, he used to go to uh, dances uh, or, or shows around this area, New Brownfield uh, especially, and he used to check out those uh, Oompa band musics, and, and he managed to catch on to uh, to that sound of the uh, polkas and waltzes. Uh, you know that uh, Germans and uh, um, Czechoslovakians and Polish people that were settled uh, around this area, especially New Brownfields. So he managed to uh, pick up the accordion, which was uh, amazing, man. I was, I was telling my wife, you know, it's amazing how uh, the generations, you know, uh, my, my grandpa used to play a Horner one role. And then when my dad started recording and learned how to play, because I'm watching my, my grandpa play, so he caught on and, and uh, he managed to uh, get a, a two-row corner. And then years passed or whatever, and then I picked it up and then the three-row came. So it was a two-row grandpa and, and my dad, two-row, one-row, 
two row and then three row. So your grandfather used to go to um, to New Braunfels and he listened to polkas played with these big accordion playing German music. So yeah. so your grandpa was able to make that music with a one row. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He managed to, uh, I don't know how he did it, but uh, he learned uh, and... Uh, so uh, I didn't get to, he didn't get to record because uh, that, at that time, you know, there was no facilities of recording, but uh, he used to play in dances, house dances, and uh, people from the barrio uh, used to <laughs> hire my grandpa, you know, to uh, play on, on their houses. You know, they, they put all of the furniture stacked in one, in one room and, and for dancing space, and uh, they had a nice time, you know, dancing and all that, you know. Well, that and, was uh, that was the only entertainment at the time, right? <laughs> yeah, and he was uh, he was well known around this uh, the San Antonio area, and they called him El Tío Pat. He was Patricio. So uh, from there on, uh, then uh, my dad came and started recording in 1936 in Decca Records. Uh, he was. Uh, Recorded recording under the name of El Flaco, so on seventy the big seventy eight, which I I did seventy eight myself, you know, in, in the fifties, early fifties. So uh, from there on, I uh, well, I learned how to play the accordion. Um, I, I was about six years old when I saw my dad play, and he was you know playing at home where in his days off. He went to work, you know, and he had a, my dad had a day job uh, weekly. When he went to work, I picked up that accordion, <laughs> which was a two row you know, yeah. so I uh, managed to, um, by watching him play at home, you know, I, I uh, picked it up and started uh, playing, uh, the, uh, you know, learning how to play. He didn't know that I was practicing because uh, I said, <laughs> okay. But uh, then uh, one day, uh, my dad came home from work early and uh, he was uh, entering the house, you know, opened the door, but it was half, half open and he heard somebody playing and he, he said, who's playing there in the recording? And it was a surprise for him because he didn't know I played because <laughs> I didn't want to handle his accordion because of respect or whatever, you know. So, <laughs> And then uh, I think he stood there halfway open. I didn't see him. You know? So uh, when he finally opened the door, uh, he caught me. I didn't know what to do. I had my accordion in my hand, you know, and then I tried to put it in the side, you know, dead, you know. <laughs> but no, it was uh, by the time he, he entered, he came straight to me and he was in tears. Wow. And, uh, he came straight to me and gave me gave me a big hug, you know, and crying, you know, because he he didn't know I I, I was practicing, and that he didn't know. You just picked it up on your own, right? Yes, yeah, I I was self-taught. Afterwards, he said, "Mijo, you can pick, you can play my party anytime you want," because he know he he knew that I was playing pretty good, though. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, he's focused. He's uh, waltzes or whatnot. So you started with a two row, huh? Yes, I uh, with a two row, and then in the mid fifties, uh, no, uh, it was in early early fifties, around nineteen fifty one, fifty three, around that area, and not that time though. Mm. Then the three row corner came along, and then I I managed to get an accordion for three rows, so I. I started playing the, the three row. The the reason why because they, it's got you know a three row, and it's got more range. You got more notes, and uh, there you can get more music instead of a three row. A two row is kind of limited. Because just imagine with one, one row, oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I started practicing the the, the three row, which my dad's stuck to the two row uh, and he could play a, a little you know uh, on a three row but he was used to playing uh, like the, the old style you yeah. know just he 
played the, the three role, but he was not comfortable. He wanted the two role. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Flaco, did you use the bass side as well, or you just use the treble side? And a diatonic uh, accordion, uh, it's uh, limited on basses. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just 12, 12 bass, mm -hmm. but uh, then on the treble side, on the buttons, uh, which is a diatonic, push and pull is different. No. So uh, uh, the bass line is, uh, lines are real limited because yeah. uh, you can get chromatics on your treble side on a three roll, but uh, there's no uh, enough basses to cover the have notes or whatever. So right. But uh, if you play simple, you can manage to play the, the bass side. But uh, nowadays, uh, you know, accordionist nowadays, which uh, they Play it. I mean, they're they're good young kids, man. They play real good, and but they don't use the basses either because there's a lot of uh, chromatic scales there. The bajo sexo, which is a 12, 12 string guitar, is the one that backs up. Yeah, takes care of uh, the bass lines. When you play on a diatonic, you have to play very simple in and out, in and out, to be able to use the bass side. Otherwise, you can't because the chromatics. Typically, you do it a lot on the pool, right, Flaco? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, there, there's several techniques that you can go inward and outward. Yeah, but uh, to get more chromatic uh, scales of whatever is going out. On the pool, oh. correct. Yes. We, uh, and uh, I heard a guy say, uh, you know, that the accordion's got a, a nickname. I said, you know, you know what, what it's that uh, accordion. He's got a nickname. It's a Kamtumi uh, Goframi. I said, what? Well, it's Kamtumi Goframi. <laughs> <laughs> or Spooning Bass or whatever. But it's it's a lot of different things or, or method of uh, playing a, a piano accordion or right. a keyboard accordion. Uh, because of the keyboard accordion world, it's got the, all kinds of things. Uh, well, it's got all the notes. You got all the Not notes there. In there huh? <laughs> and in a, in a diatonic, it's like a harmonica. Yes. You have to tuck in and then push. push yeah. Push yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, the the keys are there. It's like a typewriter. You know, <laughs> if you know if you, if you know where the keys are, <laughs> you, you're okay. So Flaco, uh, and so let's talk a little bit about the the different styles because you started with a two row, so that you had to play a different style with a two row. We played more of the the old style conjunto. The, yes, the old right? style. Yeah, yeah, because there was no, uh, there was just uh, the old uh, focus waltzes or whatnot. I played the, the two row, but uh, then I said, "There's a there's some." Other things that can be done, but not in a two row. So, so when you started listening to like Los Alegres de Teran, because Los Alegres de Teran were using a three row. Oh, right? Yes, yes. Sir. So, so their style was a little bit different. Conversations that you and I've had is you talk about how they were also an influence musically. Yeah, uh, Eugenio Abrego of the Los Alegres de Teran. My dad said, and my dad, or oh, myself, you know, and a lot of people like love so like the, the, the one, uh, simplicity of uh, uh, playing the accordion, playing simple. People can understand what you're doing, yes. you know. But if you get too smart, you act too smart and playing <laughs> a lot of things in there, people won't won't know what what they're listening to. So you have to simplify uh, what you do. I, I would say it's like a like a BB King. You know, he played those simple stuff, but uh, the heart, the, the, what he did, what he felt, it's the same thing with the accordion. If you play something understandable and soulful, uh, people can understand. You were telling me that you recorded with Dwight Yoakam and you were doing a lot of pasadas and he told you, that sounds good, but less. Was it him? Uh, well, it was uh, the producer was uh, Pete Anderson, so it, it was uh, which got to be number one on the charts at Billboard, uh, the streets of Bakersfield. Yes, 
And uh, when we were recording, I was ready to record, but the, the producer said, you know, just play your butt off, you know, just play, just give it all you. So I started recording, throwing over, giving too much of what I was doing. They stopped me right away and said, ah, you're doing too much. Well, you told me to play my butt off, you know, and said, okay, well, I did it. And then I, I understood, you know, that uh, uh, simplicity uh, of playing any instrument, people can get the message instead of a lot of rattle, a lot of things that uh, people get confused on, on if you overdo what you play. Well, and that's why I brought that up because you were talking about, you know, your, how your dad would talk about simplicity. So this story that you talked about, the streets of Bakersfield and, and, and how they told you, okay, that was, that's great, but do less. You, you told me once that uh, there was a guy in San Antonio who you kind of sounded alike, and that was Manuel Guerrero. Oh, yes. And he, uh, he played real soulful. And uh, you could understand every note he did when we were recording more than at the same time, you know. And he had the uh, uh, legs of Los Alegres de Teran, but he, he polished it more, you know, as far as phrasings. But the heart of the soul he had was incredible. So I just caught on to his ideas. I, uh, Heard so many accordionists that uh, I didn't know where to, to go. So finally, I just managed to get my sound myself, you know, my, my uh, way of playing. You know, if you play an instrument and you feel it, you talk to it and it talks back to you, you, you cry with it and you laugh with it. You, and it just, yeah. not just an accordion, any, any instrument that you really feel, and it comes with, what well, you want to do. I think you were the one who told me, he says, man, it, it, that when you play, even if you just play one note, you feel it, you know, you, 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 you feel, you sense it. So uh, if you can play like that, even if you just play one note, you affect people. Well, well yeah, I, I, I noticed, I talked to my accordion and the accordion response, <laughs> it, it, it talks to me back, you know, it's part of you, it's part of your life. It's it's uh, it's a good thing to feel. You know? Yes. Well, I mean, if if you don't have any heart, then people are not going to feel it. And I think everybody that listen to you right away yeah. say, "Wow, you know, yeah. mucho corazón." Yeah. There's there's a lot of techniques of playing. You know, like I said before, if you do too much, it's like putting too much sugar in your coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about your accordion. So what key combinations do you use the most? Well, in this type of music uh, or, uh, you know, text macro conjunto, usually it's, uh, it's a GCF accordion. Uh, but uh, there's more keys there. I mean, you know, you can get a GCF, but you can get a D and uh, other keys. So there's a lot of things there that are there. That, that doesn't have any ending. I mean, you know, the more you search for keys or, or whatnot, uh, they're there. When you sing, do you, do you feel that it helps you with your voice, your singing with a GCF? It depends on, on the range of your voice. You choose uh, FBE, right. lower, mainly for, and, and conjunto is known for duet, you know, harmonizing voice, vocals. And, and the GCF is the more common. Obviously, you change it when you play with a country artist. Yes, it's the same thing as, uh, like, I would say Bob Dylan. He plays a harp. Uh, and he's got, uh, like, a belt here. But it's the same thing. Like, push and pull, it's the same thing. And so he, he gets an A, uh, harmonica. And so yeah. uh, it depends on, on the singer, on the key that he's going right. to sing. Right. In the piano, well, it's all there, though. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to push and pull and find it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I find it very interesting. You learn how to tune your accordions to how you like it. When did you start doing that? 
when I was a teenager, I think when I when I uh, started my three row, my dad used to go to uh, have his uh, accordion tune. There was two brothers, uh, Stark, Chris, and uh, I can't recall the other name, John. They were German guys. They uh, tuned accordion for the conjuntos around the area because nobody could repair a reed or, or tune the accordions or, or whatnot, you know. So I managed to uh, watch this guy, the German guy. He didn't want to choke. I mean, you, you know, he, <laughs> he, he he went to the other room because I, I was just trying to watch how he did it. I, I managed to learn how to do it myself. And, uh, you know, just uh, uh, who made tools. File and a, a, clo a, a clothes hanger, right? Una a clothes hanger and a, <laughs> a bellow and, and uh, yeah. But now, and I, I used to tune the accordions by, by ear, you know, or even I, I, uh, the bass lines of the accordion, then I, uh, I could tune. So it was supposed to be on 440, which is uh, the main tuning, you know. Yeah. And well, so, you, you learn how to tune your accordion, but you also figured out the sound that you liked. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, there's there's a lot of uh, you know accordion players that they like different kinds of uh, tuning, uh, especially the vibration of uh, of uh, the accordion, the reeds. You know, if it's too much vibrato on on the accordion side, I have to bring it down so it, it'll give it a wavy sound. It's like a singer, you know, like if a singer uh, sings like uh, without vibration, just straight is John, you know, just it doesn't, it doesn't. And and then a singer that does, uh, uh, you know, too trebly, it's not good either. So you have to do it a, a, a mellow, mellow way, you know, so it'll be real nice and mellow. It's interesting, Flacco, that, I had the privilege to come and see you in 2008 because you and I worked on the Flaco Jimenez Signature Series. Yes so, we, yes. so we basically got your tuning, you know, the way you tune it. But the only thing that I did leave out was the modifications that we didn't do on the Signature Series. For example, uh, let me just show you really quick so, so people can know what we're talking about. Okay. So here I have uh, the accordion that we made for you. So, so basically... On, on this first row right here, on the Signature Series, yes. this top row, you flip it. La volteas. Yes, yes. Right? And, and, this, yeah. and then yeah. this one here, the top middle, mm -hmm. you change it from a F sharp to a B flat. Yes, yes. Actually, it, that's a, the original tuning of the three-row three uh, diatonic. Uh, what I noticed, accordion is, especially in a three row, it's easier to do that for chromatic uh, purposes. And uh, you, you, you can modify that top row, top, uh, uh, top buttons, just the top ones. Those are sort of flats, yeah. Uh -huh. It serves the way you play. And a lot of people really don't play like your style. So that's why I kind of left that out. I thought, well, I don't want to get, I don't want to confuse people in the market. Yeah. But I record, I, I tune my accordions like you. There's so, certain, uh, you know, riffs that I like that you do that I can't do it on a regular accordion. I have to change those those notes as well. Let, let's say like a, like, a, like a guitar, you know, they put a capo on, on it, you know. Yes. So they, they do that. So the open open strings or, or whatnot, you know, different, yeah. different things of, of doing it. It depends on how you learn how to do it. Nowadays, you know, uh, accordionists don't change nothing. It, yeah. It's like the factory. Yes. So what, my way of doing it, my way of playing is because of the old style, like Valerio Longoria, Tony de la Rosa. A lot of guys, you know, that uh, they do that. They, they uh, would modify it, yes. Modify it, yes. Uh -huh. And sometimes they say, hey, you're, you're just cheating here. No, it's not that. <laughs> it, 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 uh, it's just a modification so you can get uh, your, your chromatics easier. It depends on the player. You know. 
You know, Flaco, many years ago, I called you. I was really frustrated because I had an old LP of yours. And uh-huh. there was a song that I was trying to figure out. And I had all my accordions out. I had my GCF, my F box, my EAD box, my ADG box. And none of them sounded the same. So I called you. I said, Flaco, what in the world? And you're like, oh, yeah, I tuned it to F sharp B E. <laughs> I'm like, what? In fact, in fact I'm working on it uh... <laughs> I started yesterday. I'm, it's already finished, you know. It's a G flat, which is an F sharp, you know, in, right. in between. In between, I prefer just the open, like open tunings, you know. It doesn't move me to to go and play in E flat, B flat, or this. I like open tunings. Yes, that's, that's a way. Uh, a lot of uh, like a pedal steel, you know. I noticed uh, that Dwight Cooter does that on, on what he does, you know, and he does it beautiful. And, you know, country singers or country uh, music is uh, just an open tune and it sounds beautiful, man. It's really, really ringy and, uh, you know, it, it glows, those yes. open tunings, yes. But, you know, what's interesting, though, is you don't use this, this tuning, the F sharp B E on a lot of songs. Yes, uh, but it, it it depends on 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 the song because it sometimes it's it's difficult in some ways to play in a G G C F accordion and and go to a E or or a F B little flats, you know. Yeah. And, and there are accordions that do that, but uh, I'd rather stay. On open tunings. Yes. Yeah. No, that's awesome. No, I mean, I've learned a lot just hanging out with you uh, and and all your ideas and your tunings and what your modifications. It's been a great experience. Uh, so we talk about the different styles, you know, the two row, the three row. Your music started changing. Yes. When I was in my teens, I used to tune into uh, different stations of, uh, you know, country or different things, You're especially country. I love country. And then it was before, before I always man, when I started <laughs> listening to rock and roll and, and uh, rhythm and blues or whatnot, you know, jazzy things. So I started learning how to blend in, in, in different kinds of musics, especially country, uh, but not heavy stuff, you know, I don't go for heavy stuff. I'm, too old for that. <laughs> so when, when you started hanging out with Doug Sum and all those guys, you already knew how to play this style of music. You just kind of fit in really well then. Yes, yeah. Because uh, first experience was with, with Doug Sum. So he invited me to record. They, they were uh, recording some uh, album in, in New York. So uh, there's where I met uh, Dylan and uh, Dr. John and all those cats. You know. So then I got interested in changing or, or trying to blend in in different kinds of, of, of musics. And uh, it's amazing that uh, the accordion has been for, there for a long time. And <laughs> I saw when I was a young boy, you know, I used to go to the movies and uh, watch the country bands, especially you know, the Sons of the Pioneers. <laughs> and they get the accordion. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when Gene Autry, you know. <laughs> But it was a piano, uh, right? Uh, but still, the, the, so the accordion has been around for a long time. Oh so, yes. <laughs> no. Hey, you play, you play good accordion. You know? Thank you, bro. Uh, thank you, Flaco. I, I, I try. You know, it's a hobby, yeah. but I, I, I can't compete. You know, and I don't try to compete. I just like to do it just to, to hang out and play. But, uh, but hey, you've given me some great pointers. You've given me some good tips. So yeah, thank you for we, that as we, well. We, yeah, we have. Fun, man. When when we get together, man. Uh, yeah. Well, I yeah. learn a lot. I learn a lot. You know, sometimes I'll say, hey, "Flaco, show me this pasada I'm hearing." But I, I just, and you're like, "Oh, it's like this." I'm like, "Oh, okay, that easy." Well, why can't I do it? Well, because I'm not Flaco. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, you know, Gil, and there's a lot of guys around the world, you know, yes. that uh, is picking up the accordion now. Even uh, Los, Los Gatos, when they used uh, Japan and, you know, I when I was in London, England, you know, those uh, accordion players over there man, in Scotland and Ireland, we did a show, the session 
it was with, um, well, I can't recall the name right now, from someplace in, in, in uh, Ireland it was, uh, they, they use a lot of that sound of, uh, they call it the jigs, I think it is, uh, in, in some place in Ireland. There's there's some many good players around that area. You know, techniques of playing and the feel of it and a good instrument, I would recommend the Horner, man. It's a, the best. I mean, the years will tell how many years has they been doing uh, those accordions. Uh, oh, for over 100 years, Laco. Yeah, I heard, I, I read the story. <laughs> His name was Matias. Huh? Matias, Matias Honer, yeah. So he started with harmonicas in 1857. Uh -huh. And then in 1904, they started uh, with accordions. It's a long time. <laughs> long time. <laughs> No, uh, but it's amazing. I mean, we could we could spend hours, Flaco, talking about well, everything yeah. that you've done. But I think this is good. We we've, we've kind of talked a little bit about about your history and with the accordion, uh, and like you said, all the generations. You know, you have first, second, and third generation Honer accordion players. You've been able to make some incredible music and uh, memorable music. Oh yes, I mean, you know, in my opinion, Horner is part of my life as far as accordion. And uh, there's a lot of accordion makers and uh, I respect them or whatever, but uh, my main instrument is a horner. My dad would say the same thing and my abuelo, and my <laughs> granddad say the same thing, you know. It's, it's, it's been quite an experience for me. And then uh, the opportunities that I've had along the line, you know, recording with a Rolling Stones and all those cats, you yeah. know, and Mavericks and whatnot. So many, I can't recall offhand. <laughs> There's so many of them. Yeah, you've recorded with so many great artists. But uh, it's been quite an experience for me. It's been quite a long road, but I'm still here. Thank well, God. I'm really uh, happy that I have had the opportunity to work with you. The accordion that we made for you, uh, spent some time with you. So I'm very honored Oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to say hello to uh, all my fellow musicians and all of my fans and everybody that's tuning in. There are so many friends that I've got in the music field, you know, that it, when we were talking about harmonica, uh, that I became friend with the guy and we made some shows with, uh, and he played the harp, uh, Charlie Musselwhite. Yeah, we had a lot of good times and, and with Dwight and all those cats, you know. So I really thank them for giving me a hand, you know, to uh, to done what I've done, you know. And Ray Cooter. Ray Cooter was a giant, giant step for, for Flaco Jimenez. Yes. And um, Peter Rowan and yes. old, uh, Raul Malo and, uh, oh, man, so many guys, you know, that I really thank you. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time, Flaco. I really appreciate you spending some time with me, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, not by any time. And uh, again, I'm going to thank everybody out there. And, and thanks for the support. And uh, hopefully, uh, maybe one of the days we'll have, have some more fun out there. Have a good one. Good night. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.